In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys how I steam clean car leather seats in this Lexus, why I'm doing it in this car, and some serious dangerous things that you need to watch out for when you're doing something like this in this specific car. Now let's get straight into it. What's going on? So glad you guys are here and welcome back to the Wilson Auto Detailing community. If you are a professional auto detailer who wants to become more successful and profitable in your business or just a car enthusiast who wants to improve your detailing ability, then definitely consider hitting that big red subscribe button right below this video. So I'm on location right now and I'm about to steam clean this driver's side seat in this Lexus SUV. However, before I do, I want to share with you guys a couple things. Number one, I want to explain why I'm going to actually steam clean this seat rather than clean it with like a non-abrasive scrub pad or a brush or some chemicals in SUV Lexus in any kind of car that Lexus produces. I don't know how to put this exactly and it's not a, a blanket statement and so this isn't the case every single time in every single Lexus but in many Lexuses uh, the leather is kind of what I call soft leather and I'm not sure exactly how it's made. I'm not sure exactly what they do and don't do to it and what makes it this way but you'll find that if you were to use like Super Clean or Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner and a non-abrasive scrub pad, many times you will be very scared because all of a sudden you rub the coloring and the leather off. And once again, I'm not sure exactly why that is. I would have to look it up and look up kind of how their leather is made and what they do to it in their manufacturing process. But what it kind of feels like is that in a lot of leathers, they have a really kind of standard, kind of thicker, protective plastic coating on it. And I don't know if this is the case, but what it feels like is that the plastic coating on this this Lexus leather is much thinner or kind of not as much, you know, present as other car leathers. And so once again, I'm not saying that is what it is. I'm just saying that's what it kind of feels like when you're cleaning it. And so a lot of guys, you know, will use a non-abrasive scrub pad or will steam it, you know, really, really hard because the leather's really dirty in these cars in particular, and they end up rubbing it off. And rather than it just cracking, it literally looks like you kind of took like a knife and you just scraped on the literal center of the seat until the color was gone. And so that's why I'm not using an autobrasive scrub pad. It's why I'm not using a brush. It's why I'm not actually even using a chemical because there are times specifically on this leather where you will even use a chemical and because the chemical just touches the leather and it's so fragile, it almost like like it would it kind of like what you would picture an acid doing, like an acid just kind of eats its way through something. That's what it looks like the chemical does even with a lighter cleaner like an all-purpose cleaner by Meguiar's. Even though it's diluted heavily, it still kind of produces these dripping marks and it's kind of hard to avoid it on this specific leather. So let me explain what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. So what I've got here is my VX5000 steamer. Um, you don't have to use this specific type of steamer. Once again, I'm always going to hook up links to everything I use in the videos. I'll hook up links to less expensive steamers below in the description box. But this is the steamer that I use. I've got two microfiber towels wrapped around the head of this steamer. I just have my nylon triangle brush um, head attachment here and I've wrapped two microfiber towels towels around it. The reason that is, is because heat destroys microfiber basically. And so when you put um, this kind of concentrated high temperature heat on a microfiber towel, it basically um, just kind of makes all the microfibers shrivel up. And so if I only were to use one microfiber towel, because the heat is so um, kind of intense and it's destroying basically the microfiber towel in whatever area it's on, I get like these kind of streaky, stripy kind of zebra marks on the leather when I only use one because it creates these tiny little spaces that kind of stick out through the microfiber where the nylon bristles actually touch the leather itself and rather than the steamer and the um, kind of entirety of the microfiber towel touching the area of the leather that I'm on, only parts of it touch because those microfibers are being shriveled up and they're kind of being uh, compacted together almost. And so I wrap two of them around because even though yes it's destroying both of these microfiber towels, um, it kind of creates more of a surface area for the microfiber towels to actually touch the leather. And so if that didn't make sense, it's okay. It's kind of complicated, but just make sure you're wrapping around two or you will get these kind of streaky patterns on the leather. Now what I'm gonna do is literally put it on the lowest 
steam setting that this steamer has. And I'm not gonna speed this up because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. I'm going to leave the steamer on the leather for very little amount of time. I'm not going to steam this leather much at all because if I do too much, the same effect will happen as if I was using a chemical or a non-abrasive scrub pad. So I'm going to be very, very fast with the um, kind of amount of time I'm letting the steamer work in the leather. And then I'm just going to be following up with this microfiber and wiping up the kind of vapor steam that's left behind. So let's go ahead and just show you guys what this looks like. Now before I go any further, I want you guys to see something because this is really, really emphasizing the point I'm making. So see how little time I even touched the leather? So check this out. You guys see this kind of ring right there? See how that, that appeared right there? So see how kind of fragile this leather is? This is going to go away as it dries. It kind of starts to fade. Um, if it was a chemical, it's much difficult to have, much more difficult to have it go away, but this will not be there forever. But this, uh, this will go away in like five, 10 minutes. But you guys see the kind of the point I'm making. It's so, it's like this leather is just so, I don't know, difficult to deal with because it's so soft and then on top of that these cracks and these areas where the leather's already worn makes it all that much more difficult so I'm even going to spend less time on this leather seat than I did on the rest because it's so worn down if I were to spend any more time it would wear it down even further in a really obvious way and so you guys can see this is already starting to fade but once again you guys get the point I'm making so I'm not going to speed this up but you guys are going to see how little time I spend on this leather seat. And another thing, guys, I'm not even going to steam this part because this part is so worn down. If I were to steam it, it would just be literally just terrible. And so I'm going to be very, very cautious. I'm going to do, probably not even do this side. I'm just going to wipe it down with some water from my steamer because once again, this side is so worn. It's just, it, it's just would be a bad, bad, bad thing. And even up here, guys, like this area, I know you can't see it, but this is so worn down as well. It's just, it's such a catch-22 because you want to be cleaning it, but at the same time, you don't want to just make it worse than it already is. And this is another thing in the detailing world where you constantly have to just make these kind of decisions of what am I going to do and then what are the limitations of what I'm doing because I want to make sure that my customer is getting the best service possible. And so how can I do this to where I'm giving my customer the best service possible and then also, you know, saving my own reputation and making sure that I'm protecting myself at the same time and not getting myself into trouble, steaming things and then actually hurting them. So it's just another one of those things that make the detailing world so incredibly complicated and just so not black and white at all. It's just a constant battle of like one thing after another. Once you think you get it figured out, something else comes up and it's like, dang, I can't even clean this because it's so damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys just kind of where I feel like I'm gonna stop here. The reason I'm stopping here is because look at this damage. If I were to steam this, number one, you don't wanna get water in these cracks down here but then number two, it's so worn that if I were to use a steamer or chemical, it would become that much more worn. So you guys can see this is where I'm going to be stopping because of the nature of this leather. Not only is it already so worn as it is, but it's also leather put out by Lexus. And this specific leather put out by Lexus is extremely, 
extremely fragile. It's like trying to hold glass like on your fingertip while you're riding a horse. That's a terrible analogy, but you guys get what I'm saying. It's just like this balancing act. It's so difficult. Like if I touch it, if I move this way, if I move this way, I'm going to hurt it. And so I'm going to stop here and go ahead and actually uh, uh, dress all this leather with a protectant and communicate all of this to my customer. So this is one of those situations where I like to say, you know, welcome to the detailing world. It's so funny. You know, it's just so many guys, you know, talk about wanting to start a detailing business, but then when they actually get involved in it, they're like, okay, I hate this. Like, not only is it backbreaking work and incredibly difficult and you have to deal with customers and all that sort of stuff, but then when you're actually working, you know, you set your expectation like it's going to be perfect and then all of a sudden you run into situations like this and either you don't know about this leather and you literally damage it and you have to, you know, talk to your customer or two, you do know about this leather but your expectation was so high that you have to stop it, you know, places like this and not clean anymore and just go ahead and dress it and it's not necessarily perfection and then you get disappointed by that and so, again, it's just like the detailing world. It's just one thing after another. It's so not an exact science. But if you guys like this video and it added some value to your life, hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hook up all that stuff in the YouTube comments below because I always read those and I'm sure to get back to you guys as fast as I can. And if you are new here, then definitely consider subscribing because I come out with videos all the time just like this on products, tools, strategies, communication skills, business skills, and so much more, all in an effort to help the pro detailers become more successful and profitable in their businesses. And I share the same strategies that turn my business into a full-time income with part-time hours. So if that interests you, definitely subscribe. Once again, thank you guys so much for being involved here. And as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard and I'll see you guys in the next video.